Good afternoon. Um, it, it is uh, pleasant uh, to be able to uh, g give this introductory speech for the uh, competition of the rector award, and this is organized by the students. That's why I'm very happy that we are able to organize this event. I think this is an extremely important event, and it's important that there are so many people present here today. It means that the community and the students are indeed interested in this debate, and they are very important. Welcome, everybody, and I will give the floor now. Good afternoon, candidates, lecturers, students, and academic staff. Today, the community uh, of the Vilnius University is living through a very special period indeed. I don't want to speak too much, but I would like to wish all the candidates democratic, uh, politically correct debates and competition, and also value-based competition. And I hope that everybody will uh, find courage to ask the questions they've always wanted to ask. So I wish everybody a great debate today. I would like to present the moderator of the debates, a former student of the Vilnius University, former president of the Vilnius uh, University Students' Representation, Arminas Varanauskas. Today he is the director of the Knowledge Economy Forum, and I hope that he will actively participate and moderate today's discussion. I hope that everybody will be commenting and adding their insights during today's session. Also, I hope there will be humor as well. So I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you for the organizers of the debates. Thank you for your trust that you've put in us. This is the last uh, public debate from the whole series of the debates, and I'm very happy to be the moderator. This is an important occasion. I'm able to return once again to the university. I'm happy about it. I would also like to thank the organizers and on behalf of the organizers and the participants for being able to... Uh, for being able to organize this event in the library um, and the director of the library. Uh, the, the library is always open and always gives us uh, facilities to organize debates, events, etc. So thank you. Now I will present in the alphabetic order the candidates. This is a standard practice. I would like to uh, give applause after uh, the final um, person is presented, so that we would save some time. So first of all, I will present the candidates, and then I will present briefly the order of today's discussion. So, the first candidate in the furthest corner from me is the Vilnius University professor, the Lithuanian Science Academy president, Professor Juras Benis. Uh, another candidate, the uh, law faculty dean, Professor Thomas Davoulos. The State uh, Science uh, Research Institute uh, member of staff and also president of Electrochemical uh, Material uh, uh, Institute. Institute, Mr. Uh, Professor Emil Tassiuzel Lunas, Vilnius University History Faculties Dean, and also the Science Academy uh, Council's member, Remontas Patrauskas. Uh, Bigelow La Laboratory for Ocean Science Single Cell um, Genomics Institute's Director, Professor Ramunas Stepanauskas. And the current rector, Professor Arturas Zhukauskas. So the debates will be comprised of three 
parts. The first part is the questions, introductory questions that have been prepared in advance for all the candidates. These are very topical questions. Uh, the candidates have received those questions and have been able to prepare. The candidates will have two and a half minutes to reply to the questions. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a time, uh, a, a clock at the front, so that you will be able to monitor the time to ensure we uh, do not uh, talk too long. And also, I will give you a sign to know when we're approaching the time limits. And then the candidates will be kindly asked to finish. The second part is commitment. So there will be an official commitment ceremony. I will tell you more about it later on. And the last part is an opportunity to raise questions. Uh, these questions will be uh, submitted in slide slido.com. You, everybody can uh, ask questions this is also this session is also broadcasted live so everybody can ask questions and there will be a, a chance for the candidates to answer your questions so go to slido.com download the app and uh, use the hashtag rinkimi and you can anonymously or not anonymously raise any question that you want and of course, the question is for all the candidates, not for a specific candidate. And of course, we will then choose the, the most um, topical questions. I'm happy to tell you that this uh, event is also interpreted into two languages, English and sign language. This shows certain determination by the Vilnius University and by the students community to include more uh, a, a higher variety of members of our community who, who study in our university, who work in our university. The live broadcasting of this event takes place in, on Facebook, YouTube channel, as well as uh, uh, Facebook's profile uh, of Vilna students' representation. You can also hear it on the radio. I will not tell you now the uh, exact um, broadcast location. So I think I've uh, informed you of all the uh, specificities of this debate. And as before, we will start from the beginning in the alphabetic order to answer the questions. So the first question, which I would like to ask, uh, and uh, Professor Juras Banis is requested to kindly answer the question, how do you imagine the bachelor, master and doctorate studies and how these studies are interconnected and what are the differences. Thank you for your question. Good afternoon. Please speak to the microphone. Afternoon, colleagues. There are three cycles, study cycles, bachelor, master studies and doctorate studies. The link between them is simple. If we talk about the Vilnius University as an institution, scientific institution, of course, after bachelor's studies, uh, master's studies uh, should follow, and it would be good if doctorate studies would follow after the master's studies. I've mentioned before that if we want to become a scientific university, a research university, we need to increase the number of doctorate students. Now we have two little doctorate students. Once again, I would like to reiterate, it's, uh, we need uh, at least 2,000 um, doctorate students. At the moment, it's only 1,000. It should be at least 10% of all the number of the students. Uh, today, uh, it is very important that we have a number of interdisciplinary studies. So both the bachelor's studies and the master's studies should be able to offer such type of uh, studies. Another topic is the length of studies. Six years of studies in some cases is too long. But of course, 
medicine uh, science is highly regulated. So six years probably is um, what is needed. Of course, there are other studies which um, which is five years time, so it's two cycles, the bachelor's and the master's um, studies uh, to, um, are five years long. In some cases, uh, the studies take shorter time, like one and a half years. So what is important is to be able to link and to, uh, to be able to work at the same time as study. This is all interconnected. Everything starts with the bachelor's degree, master's studies, and the doctorate studies, and these should go hand in hand. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer. Now, Professor Thomas, please continue. Thank you. Good afternoon. I will start with that. I'm a specialist in labor law. So, of course, I'm the most uh, interested in your uh, you work afterwards, what you're going to do after the university, what jobs will you have. So the, your competences for the future are very important for us. We have to look at this, have a deep comprehension of the jobs in the future and we have to understand what you will need in the future. Now, we need to have programs that will prepare students to join the labor market. But to prepare a new program, we need eight to 10 years, which means that if you want to create a program for AI, we'll see the new graduates only in eight to 10 years. Can we wait so long? Well, I'm not so sure. I think that we really start to, to start thinking right now about interdisciplinary studies and not to see the professions as very narrow. We should think about several competences and we should increase the possibility to choose your study subjects. Now the quality of studies on all levels is very depends a lot on what students are there and what, uh, what's on the teaching staff. So we need to invite as many as possible international, best international uh, lecturers, so they could teach bachelors and masters, and they could give high quality knowledge and good experience. Because when we ask our students, why do, we, they, why do they go on Erasmus programs to foreign countries? They usually reply that they want to see oh, how the study is happening in the other countries. So we have to give good experiences in our country. Now, PhD studies. Well, that's, the situation is not good. We have 800 students and that's not enough. We're really lagging behind. We really need to do much more. We have some uh, administrative red tape. And also, I think we are a bit too closed in our university we really should improve the possibility for the students to move into the in PhD studies. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Professor Imutis is next. Thank you. Well, I'm doing uh, science mostly, research, and uh, thus I'm looking at PhD sector from this lens. And I think that uh, the PhD studies is what differentiates uh, universities from other types of institutions from uh, colleges and others. So firstly, a university should be a research university. We should encourage that in our programs. Now another issue, we should invest more in our capabilities in Vilnius University. As a colleague has mentioned, uh, the mentality is sometimes a bit too closed. We should open up. We should open up on university. Also, we should consolidate the capabilities of the country. I think this is an issue that's important for the whole country. I think the biggest problem in Lithuania here is uh, fragmentation. Now looking through my lens, my uh, department, we see that uh, our science is earning Nobel Prizes in the world. But we see that in Lithuania there are many different institutes and organizations that are narrowing down their scopes too much. So our university should become a consolidating force. 
we have one institute just nearby, just a few hundred meters away where I work. And uh, I, I would hope that the, our institution uh, should become an access to draw other PhD students. Now, about quality of the studies. Well, I think that students will be happy when lecturers are happy. Stud students will be happy when lecturers come uh, to, to the lectures and only think about how to give the best lec lecture instead of thinking about how to survive, how to cope, how to go through all the bureaucracy. I, also, I don't think that students should be too dependent on the lecturer, but I think that uh, there should be as much contact hours one-on-one -on -one with the student and lecturer. I have this experience from Cambridge University. I, would, I was really happy to have a my mentors who worked a lot one-on-one -on -one with me. So we should really work a bit more in smaller groups. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Rimvidas. Thank you, good afternoon. Three keywords that come to mind immediately think about studies and quality. Flexibility, interdisciplinarity, and in in integration. Of course, no one can tell what will be needed on the job market in 5 to 10 years. Now, nowadays, world, world is very complex. So, bachelor level studies should uh, aim at two different objectives. First of all, the, the, they should uh, aim at giving the students the knowledge they need for this, for this area, but also they should uh, encourage the growth of the personality. So we need more study options, so we need individual uh, choices for parallel studies. We also need mentoring. We also need more support for students who have more challenges, material challenges. We also need to move on to other areas afterwards. We need to use better the knowledge the students have, and we need to use our students more in the science education projects. We need to review the financing schemes for students to make sure that students could be encouraged. Now I think that master studies is the most difficult point now here. I think that it, uh, the, uh, the quality of master studies is what differentiates the good universities from bad universities. So. I think flexibility and interdisciplinarity here is extremely important. We need more interdisciplinary programs and we need to have an opportunity for students to study at least two parallel objects. We also need to make sure that applied master programs are also developed and encouraged. Now for PhDs, what's important is uh, the international dimension and good uh, mentors and also the aspect of integration. Of course, uh, we need to ensure that the master level, PhD level and postdoc studies should be really integrated together and have a good interaction. But for that we need a good ac academic environment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Professor Ramunas, thank you, good afternoon. I started my studies in Vilnius University. Two years later, I moved to Sweden, to Sunset College, then Uppsala University. I studied uh, my, my bachelor's level, then moved to London for master's studies, and then did PhD in London, and then moved to Georgia for postdoc. Currently, I have many postdocs coming from many different countries all over the world. So that gives me a good understanding of all the different education systems because I see many different students from different systems. Now, what are the best practices in the other countries? Well, each university has their own system, each university has advantages, and we really have to learn from the advantages of others. What should be improved in the Vilnius University? Well, many things were mentioned already. Now, I have direct experience with uh, Sweden and the States, so I think that it could be easier for me to carry out the changes because I have direct experience of what is needed. 
for example, free and open selection of courses. Well, when I started studies Vilnius University, we already asked for that 30 years ago, but the system is still not there. So my aim would be to, to include that as soon as possible. A student at U Uppsala University joins a university instead of a separate faculty, and the student has complete freedom to, to choose whichever course he wants. He is considered to be a responsible citizen who can make choices for himself. Of course, we can see that sometimes there are problems uh, when specialists who specialize in one area, like physicists or bio biologists, can't communicate very well. So, so we need people who bridge the gaps. Now, another thing that uh, differentiates Vilnius University from my experience in Sweden is partnerships uh, and pr uh, practical aspect of the courses. We currently count only the working time by the contact hours of the lecturer. But that's not the best method. We should allow the lecturers to open up more capabilities of uh, and uh, more venues of communicating with students. Thank you, Mr. Arturo Zhukovskas. Thank you very much. I believe that all three cycles should be future oriented. We should think about the 21st, 21st century. We're creating the 21st century now in our university and we're creating a new study strategy in our university. Now, I'll be very brief. What are the differences between the bachelor, master's and PhD studies? Well, I think that during the bachelor studies, the student should first of all learn as much as possible about the world. Should And the student should uh, develop his uh, critical thinking faculties. Then, on the master's level, students should be able to use the knowledge he got in the bachelor's level and then go on to study the world on, him, on his own accord, to become a real researcher. So, other competences, not only professional competences are very important here, openness, ability to cooperate, yeah multiculturality and other issues. And then as he moves on to PhD level, the student should be able to learn how to change the world. To change the world by using his uh, knowledge, his uh, scientific knowledge, but also in, in coming up with new ideas. So creativity and initiative is very important here, as well as productivity. So all three cycles or levels are very important because they have a lot of things in common. On all three levels, we should introduce more flexibility, more freedom for the studies. Students should have uh, more opportunities to choose between different subjects, especially thinking about uh, bachelor level, we should think about 60% of credits as free and flexible. We also need good quality of studies. And for that, we need uh, more opportunities for the lecturers to advance and to develop. We also need to make sure that uh, the administrative part of our studies should be as helpful to the students as possible. Thank you. Thank you. After the first uh, session, the part of the session, it's great, we've managed to complete it on time. So I believe the Council decided to organize three debates with limited answer time. I think we should apply the same practice in our Council meetings. So it's a great life lesson to all of us and I uh, invite you to continue speaking within the provided time limits. Second question is this. So from Professor Thomas, now we're starting from the second person. How do you assess the formal and informal relationship between the lecturers and the students in the Vilnius University? What needs to be changed, if anything? Thank you. Well, we would expect from the lecturers, first of all, professional attitude and a um, possibility to sometimes um, give the credit to the students. 
we often have researchers, strong researchers, international researchers, which are highly uh, valued. But often there is a big distance between the lecturer and the student, and sometimes what the lecturer tries to say is not very clear to the student. As a result, our words um, do not reach the students. The students just uh, scroll their mobile phones, or they're just indifferent. We need to change this situation. We need to understand that the student has changed. The student's presence in the university is a challenge in some cases. It's different from the school years. So now we see that the children, the, the, the young adults who come to universities are different. Of course, I call them children as well with love. And I think that we need to understand how to reach those people. It's a challenge for lecturers. Leadership is important here, as well as empathy. Leadership and ability to help to assist, to direct the person, uh, to wake the person up. And empathy is important as we need to be at the same level as the student so that the lecturer and the student is uh, our partners. So it's important that both are open, both are able to change. I invite you to per the students to participate in the lectures. Uh, one thing is reading something in books or uh, on the internet, but uh, another thing is participating in the live lecture and seeing how the lecturer explains this. So we are social creatures. We need interaction. We need social interaction, communication, and this uh, adds uh, diversity to the studies. Uh, it's important to break the ice in the relationship between one another to see the way we are. And uh, it's also important to pass the real truths, the real messages about the world this way and how we can change it. Thank you. Next one, Professor Jose Lunas. This question is a challenging question. I'm not uh, an active uh, professor at the moment. I don't give classes. But maybe I will start uh, from another point. The qualification requirements state that each uh, lecturer has uh, to be a great scientist. There are also certain requirements related to publications. But everybody probably understands that not every great researcher is also a great lecturer. I remember one example um, it, uh, there is an example of a Nobel Prize winner who had no uh, doctorate, PhD students, because not all the researchers are able to guide the students in their PhD thesis. So we need to ensure that there is a direct connection between the uh, professor and the student, the mentorship, so-called. So interpersonal relationships are, import, uh, are important, personal qualities are important too. It is important to allow the student to integrate in the current environment. We also need to take into account that the students are now in a different environment. Some of them have moved to a different city. They need to integrate themselves into new communities. And this may be challenging. We need to understand this. And this needs to be a continuous process. The content of the studies, of course, depends more on the department, on the programs prepared at the department level. But the environment of the studies is highly dependent on the rector. Therefore, the rector needs to take special attention, to, to give special attention to the newcomers to the university so that they feel welcome, that they feel there is a space for them to reveal themselves, to develop themselves personally. Thank you. Thank you. Professor uh, Petrauskas, what's important is to um, improve the communication culture. We have still a heritage of the previous regime, the communication regime, and of course the environment has changed, but there is still much room for improvement. The communication culture, the communication itself, is born at this uh, level of 
meeting at, at in the in the room where the lecturer gives classes to the students. So we need to ensure that there is an environment of um, trust between both parties. We need to ensure there are more seminars, more discussions, more talks between both parties. And then, of course, other activities also important. Some formal um, things, for example, the hours you can visit the lecturer. It's important to make sure that the students are able to visit the lecturer, ask questions, get support. So authority is important in a positive way that the lecturers are as teachers to students and that they develop uh, communication and relations between themselves. So it's important to, to establish this uh, relationship of teacher to student. Another important step is activities outside of the university, which are important too. Excursions, um, work in laboratories, joint events. Each faculty has their own events, event, and it's, um, it's a place, a forum, where we can raise important challenges, questions, and try to address them. From my personal experience, I would like to say that the most important is playing a football match, having a beer, and then really discussing all the problems which may arise. We need to, we need to have a, 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 this, a new type of culture which requires a different environment. We need uh, football fields. Thank you. I would like to remind you that when you're speaking, please speak to the microphone because uh, this is important for the interpretation purposes. I'm sure that the audience can hear you too, but it's important that also the broadcast has good sound. So thank you. The next one is Professor uh, Stepanauskas. I currently work in the university and it is important to see the different perspectives of the staff, of the students, the professors, lecturers. And I've spoken with all these different parties. I also spoke with my colleagues I, with whom I studied together. Their children are now attending universities. So I was able to feel this new pulse, this new trend. And, and uh, my uh, close uh, family members uh, study in foreign universities in Germany, other universities. So they, most of the people I spoke to see university as a window to the world, as a great opportunity, but they also have some things they don't like. So, for example, in Vilnius, in, in, in Lithuanian universities, when you compare them to other European and American universities, there is a difference, um, communication differences between the lecturer and the student. Sometimes the, the relationship is too formal, sometimes the legal uh, word is taken into account a bit too strictly. So we need to focus more on the real problems, not on the formalities. So as a rector, I would be focusing on this uh, important factor so that we are um, creating more informal relations. Another important aspect is the lecturer needs to understand that the students learn from, not only from their classes, the students go to different classes. Uh, sometimes students learn from each other much more and it's important, we need to encourage this, we need to encourage the student communication and the lecturers need to understand this too. Learning from your own mistakes is important as well. Students need to be given space and to learn from their mistakes. It's very important to give as much opportunities as possible to grow, as for the students to grow as persons, as members of community, and this is important for the future employers as well. Thank you. And the last one, uh, Professor Zhukauskas. This is a great question. I would like to... Um, second, uh, what Rimvidas has said about the communication, the communication culture. Changing the culture is extremely difficult. 
the communication culture between uh, smart people is very hard because there is uh, a number of inter internal uh, problems. The uh, smart people are not willing to change, not always. Everyone is unique. Each one is a personality. Everyone likes to raise hard questions. Not always there is an answer to those questions. Um, the corporate culture and the elements of corporate culture are often met negatively. There is one good thing about intelligent people is uh, that smart people like to communicate with other smart people. So we can take advantage of this fact. Uh, there is much uh, we have already done in this area. Uh, we have the integration week. Uh, the Vilnius University is the first university in, in Lithuania who has started this. So we're also improving in the lecturing me methods. We're trying out new methods. We know that each and every student is important. We implement the diversity and equal rights policy. We also want to introduce international elements to our studies, individual elements to ensure that every person can uh, learn in the university and we are also every time trying to meet the needs of people with disabilities and uh, other students. Some students find it extremely hard to adapt themselves uh, in university. So I think this problem is uh, possible to tackle this problem. We have the measures available we have good examples, so we just need to take advantage of them. Thank you. Thank you. This was the last question. The second question. Oh, I'm very sorry. We left out one candidate. So please, you have the floor. Thank you. I, I thought that I didn't need to to answer the question, but of course, here we go. So, in my program, one of the most important aspects is relationship of the between the community members. The community is comprised of everybody, meaning uh, staff, lecturers, research staff, students, and others. And I think that respect is important, Respecting others' opinion is important. We need to get rid of arrogant, arrogance. One of the main criteria in uh, foreign universities when uh, being candidate for a professor's um, degree. So what's important is the so-called team building capacity, which takes into account, as I mentioned, Nobel Prize winner, who, as was mentioned, he won the prize. He is a great researcher, but he is unable to communicate with people. He wasn't unable to. He wasn't able to be a PhD thesis um, professor mentor. So we need to do the opposite. We need to ensure that there is a relationship between students and lecturers. Also, there is uh, uh, needs to be a relationship between staff, members of staff. Uh, lecturers, students, everybody. This is important. This would create a completely different environment and atmosphere in the university. And as was mentioned, that the everybody is happy to come to work every day to discuss with their colleagues. This creates a different um, environment for work. And this also I improves the environment. I've worked in... Oxford University, and every year the professor and his group, as mentioned by Rimvidas, they go to a pub. They don't go to a football match, but they just go to a pub and discuss a number of questions, including scientific questions, political questions, life questions, everything. And this is what actually connects people. We, of course, cannot expect everybody to think the same, to, to be of the same opinion, but these discussions are extremely important and are a good thing. Uh, respect is important and good communication com uh, culture is important. This is a very important thing. Thank you.
на етикета. We'll start with Professor A. Mutis for this question and I'll try to not left, uh, leave out anyone this time. Now the question is this, the alumni of the university. We of course love the alumni, we need to have them, but the question is what do we need to do to include them? At least two practical steps. Well, the question is very good, even though I didn't prepare for the question. I didn't see the question. Did we receive them in advance? Well, anyway, the role of the alumni is very important in Vilnius University. Why? It's because Vilnius University prepared many, many famous and talented politicians, scientists and specialists who work all over the world, not only in our country. And that is a... Um, treasure for our university. We need to communicate with them. We need to include them because these people, they are a big group of creative people. And we could use them for our strategic goals. For example, take finance and budget. We see that a big part, 80% of our budget comes from the state budget. Now, who decides on the state budget? Well, the politicians. The politicians and the bureaucrats. But then a lot of them used to study in Vilnius University. So if we could, you know, communicate better with them, we could make sure them to see our point of view. We don't necessarily need uh, to increase uh, the budget for Vilnius University. We need to increase the prestige for whole education system just like what it was done with the defense budget. So Vilnius University could become a leader in this communication with the alumni. There are vast, vast possibilities. We can just look around ourselves and see that there are many famous people who come from the university, but they are not used by the university. Maybe the council could also do a bit more because uh, the Council of the University is also, also responsible f uh, to find funding sources. Senate should also work on this. But Rector, again, should work on this too. If the Council and Senate would raise these issues, the Rector should provide practical steps to increase the partnerships. And we need very practical steps, practical strategic plans, and the rector should com com coordinate his actions with the Senate and Council in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Rimidas. Thank you. Well, a very important question. Alumni uh, are very important. Coming from political philosophy, I would say that this is the second body of the university. This is a body that's expanded all over the world, all over Lithuania. So the university should at least try and find a way of communicating with this very, very big community outside the university. And we can expect many different things. Uh, we can expect uh, lobbyism, we can expect funding. But then we need to have a good management of the relationship with the alumni. Now, what would, you, what, what would be the main goal? Alumni should uh, feel what's going on in the university. And there are many ways to ensure that. For example, a monthly e-journal of the university could uh, tell stories and news about the university to inform the alumni what's happening. Now, not all the stories will be interesting to the alumni, but they should know what are the news. What else can we expect from the alumni? Well, mentorship. We could include them more in mentorship, in practical studies. But then the university should also provide something for the alumni. And we really, really need to, to have a right, a lifelong right to, uh, to learn. Now, 
lifelong learning isn't the term that we really like, but uh, the r lifelong right for the alumni to participate in the courses, to participate in the life of the faculty, in the department, is very important. Now, another important thing is networks. Whatever are the interests of the alumni. We could also include them in sports networks. So alumni should also be included as active members of the community. Thank you. Then Professor Ramunas. The United States are using this connection between alumni and the university much better than we do. Europe could really learn a lot from the states in this area. The universities are using many ways to keep uh, good relationships with the university, with the alumni, and both sides win a lot. For the alumni, the possibility to participate in university throughout all life creates an important network of acquaintances and friends. And universities also win a lot. Now, financial side is very important. Harvard and MIT universities re receive a large part of the funding from the alumni, and even the biggest part of the funding. Now, what can we learn? And uh, I think the question was to give two concrete examples what could, could be done. So one example could be what the Vilnius University could do is uh, to have a homecoming weekend, which means that every university, every institution has a special weekend, a homecoming weekend, where they invite all the alumni who come, who can come, to come for the weekend at the university. They have concerts, celebrations, they, have, they meet uh, the course mates, they receive the information. And uh, these events really do a lot to, to bring people together. And they do it much better than emails or other formal uh, ways of communication. Even though an e-journal could be a good start. Now, another example could be Mentorship. Now, the Americans have something that's called shadowing. The alumni invite students to see what one working day at their job looks like. So a student spends a day at the job watching what's going on and they get a better picture and then they can see also what they can learn in this area. Thank you. Thank you now, Professor Arturas. Thank you. Well, the inclusion of alumni is very important for the quality of the university and this important reserve for the capacities of the university. Now we're trying to learn from the best practices from the states and from other universities we're also learning from our faculties, because we have good practice in the university. For example, the International and Political Sciences Institute and the Faculty of Law has a very strong alumni community. We have carried out surveys and we know what the alumni want and we know what can they offer for the culture of the university. Now, there are many differences and we can't do the same as the states do. Even Canada can't uh, introduce the same things as the States because they have a very different culture in universities and they have different types of funding. So what are we doing? We're creating an alternative social network for the alumni. We have uh, several thousands alumni already on the network. We're testing currently the system. Also, we create, are creating a partner uh, lecturers or partner docents, uh, partner professors who are coming uh, to teach from their uh, to, to, to provide the, our students with uh, actual skills that needed on the job. Now another important area is quality of studies. 
only the, the alumni that know that they've received a lot from the university are ready to give a lot to the university and to share their success. The most successful our project with the alumni is the fund we have established. The alumni has created this fund and uh, the fund helps fund the, the activities of the university but it's also a very important social project because it helps to fight uh, negative, pers ne kind of ne negative perspectives of the businesses. Now, another issue. I believe that we'll have a lot of success with the alumni when we receive the first uh, the first uh, endowments to our fund from the wills of the alumni. So that will be the proof that we're doing a good job with our alumni. Thank you. I would like to remind our speakers again to correctly use the microphone to keep it close to their face so that everyone, including the interpreters, could hear them very clearly. Now, let's move to the next part. Ha, I'm just kidding. I haven't forgotten anyone. We have two more speakers. Professor Juras, two minutes and a half for you. Thank you, alumni. When I was a dean in 2003, and I founded the Association of Alumni for our physics faculty. Well, we had questions, why do we need that? Now, the answer was, of course, we can't do what the states did. Alumni won't become our source of income. They won't bring uh, bags of money to university. And uh, as other colleagues mentioned, the, we need alumni to share life experience. They have great experiences after the universities. They have had responsibilities and they can help universities. Both uh, they can help the universities to improve the study programs to prepare better specialists. That was the main aim of our association and we have, well, succeeded in this aim. We also probably need an association for the whole university, but probably the local communities and the faculties are more important for the alumni. And the alumni who have completed studies in the different faculties could give advice for the faculties. Also, they could provide the opportunities for the students to practice in their companies. As colleagues have already mentioned, Alvidas Jabolis, one of the alumni of physics university, of, uh, faculty, has started this idea of the fund for the university. The alumni has seen the world and they know what's going on in the world so they can do a lot for the university. They can ensure better quality for the university. Now another area is lobbyism. The alumni are active in all spheres of public life. Also in, uh, in the parliament, in the government, so we should keep in touch with them and explain to them what are the challenges for the university in the 21st century. That could help us to meet the challenges. For that we also need management. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Now Professor Thomas. Thank you for the question because this question is now a opportunity for me to thank the Alumni Association of my faculty. They've been supporting us for two decades and they've, they've been supporting our students for two decades. They are, they are providing financial support, but in addition to that, they are also providing emotional support. They share ideas. They really do a lot. Now, speaking about the alumni of the university as a whole, as a big group, well, they can do a lot as many others have mentioned. I think we need two types of changes. The first issue is probably technical. 
what are the technical measures to make sure that the alumni feel close to the university? Well, there are many ways. We could have the, the special weekends, we could have the e-journals and other, other, other measures. But a real qualitative change will be achieved only when our alumni will have a real feeling that they want and need to go back to university. And they will have this feeling only if they will, be, if they will feel loved during their studies in the university, if they will feel inc uh, included in the university. That means that we should work a lot with our students, provide good student, quali student quality, we should uh, give wings to our students and they will fly back to us. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you um, all the candidates for answering the three questions. Now, according to the program, we have beer break? No? No? Okay. So maybe it's the wrong script I have. So now the commitment to students, the third part. Commitment. So in this part, I will present how this will work. So I'll ask my colleagues' help. So we have a commitment. It's a written commitment. And I will read it out loud so that you will be aware of what we're talking about. And then we have... Uh, so there's 10 statements. So we can... Uh, give you the spreadsheets. There's 10 statements. So after each statement, I will briefly pause and the candidates that agree with the statement should sign under the statement. Of course, the candidates may decide not to agree with the statement and then they will not sign. It's their freedom of choice. So we will go through all the 10 statements and then we can comment together the answers. But if somebody really wants, after a certain statement, to say something, then we will give the candidate the floor to do so. But please do not abuse this opportunity. We don't have too much time. I would like to also state that after the statements, we will have um, time to answer the questions from the Internet. And you will have one minute for the answers. So I will start with the text, with the statements. So the first one, uh, in general, commitment to the students of Vilnius University, the 16th of January, 2020. So this is the communication center. Uh, and then you, you state me, name, surname, the candidate rector to the Vilnius University during this open session of the Vilnius uh, students representation. Uh, on, uh, in the face of all the students and the community of the university, commit myself to the following in case I'm elected. So the first one, to ensure that there is at least one new dormitory that is built in the future. So commitment to build, build at least one dormitory, new dormitory. If you agree with this statement, this commitment sign your name next to the statement and then we will collect the handout so don't worry we'll know who has committed to which statement of course before the election everybody is lying a lot and of course after successful fishing uh, so of course uh, when the technical project is prepared there is a time it, it takes time to construct the actual building so in my commitment, I will. I would say I would aim for the construction. I will make all the efforts, but I cannot ensure that it will be completed during my term. I cannot commit myself to such a statement, I'm sorry. By signing, I could say, we know how to do it, we can do it, and we will do it. This was said by Professor Arturas. And also, I have done it. No? So, the Vilnius University students can go to play, but of course, yeah, you have three star dormitories which has been recently constructed. How to ensure that the students can afford it? This is another important aspect that needs to be tackled. 
If it's too too expensive, then the students are not interested in those dormitories. Thank you. So we don't need uh, so, uh, your comments on each statement. It's just if you feel like you have something to add. The second statement: the um, to increasing at least twofold these scholarships or other type of support for students of the first and second uh, cycle. Okay, once again, if you have something to add to this, please respond. We need 2 million euros at least, Professor Zhukowska says. But of course, if we will be able to increase the lecturers' uh, salaries, then we of course will in turn increase the scholarships. But there are some things we need to take into account. We cannot only give scholarships for good grades. We need to ensure that the students are uh, are able to achieve uh, such good grades for those who cannot afford to. So we need certain promotion programs as well. Uh, Professor Juras, as this is related to the financing and the budgeting, according to the statute of the university, the main institution responsible for the budget, the small parliament, I see that the small parliament is the council, and. I will commit myself to ensuring this happens, but of course this, the Council also has a say in this. Uh, Professor Imutis, uh, I, I am committed to, to the statement, but I want to reduce the amount, uh, that it would be less than 2 million. The third statement. New Vilnius University Sport and Leisure Center construction, beginning of construction of such center. I believe this is not what you expected before you came here. Professor Imutas, uh, I will commit myself to the construction of Olympic Center with International uh, Olympics Committee President. I discussed this uh, question and I believe that Vilnius University is able to do that. Uh, Professor Juras, this is in my program. Professor Zhukauskas, I will fight till the end as in the World Championship, but I cannot promise you that because we need 25 million euros at least. Another uh, question is we need to uh, hold uh, many, many discussions with our uh, students, with the parliament to ensure that we have a concept, what is actually needed, what type of leisure time the students want and so on. Thank you. The fourth statement. So the approval of the Vilnius University teaching and studying vision and also the implementation of the goals, which uh, one of which include that students are able to choose freely certain subjects in the first and the second cycle. No problem. Professor Yuzelunas, only with the help of counsel. Professor Bonis, this is in my program. Good. The next one. The Vilnius University information system needs to be updated. May I? Sure. Professor Batrauskas, uh, update. I would change, not update. There is nothing to update. We need to change the system. We need to create a system, system from the scratch. Good. The sixth one. The integration of Vilnius University community members, so organizing of training, integration week for uh, bachelor students, master students, residents, doctorate students, and so on and so on. Professor Zhukauskas, we are doing this and we will continue to do so. The seventh statement. Uh, the uh, accessibility of free of charge psychological services for the uh, community of Vilnius University, as well as free uh, foreign language courses to the community. May I? Professor Yuzelunas, with one exception. 
This is the community, so alumni are also part of the community. We cannot uh, give uh, free psychological uh, services to the alumni. I think we're talking about the students, or at least the ones that are present here today. I, I agree. Uh, Ramunas, you have the floor. Psychological services, there, there's no question. This is a matter of health, psychological health. This needs to be provided. No questions asked. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why the languages are also added. This is a, a bit different uh, question. I would like to uh, add, Professor Rimvdas, that we are expecting other languages. Everybody is expected already to know English when they come to university. So uh, after graduating the university, the graduates should know at least two foreign languages. Professor Zhukauskas, I cannot sign my name under the statement because there is already services provided, psychological services provided, but we're unable to provide psychotherapy free of charge. We cannot do that. This is, um, people can go uh, via Sodra and this is provided by the state. We, uh, we can maybe give certain discounts for the students. Again, uh, free of charge language courses, we cannot do that. I'm, of course, I support that they would be uh, affordable, accessible, but we cannot um, provide such services free of charge. This is uh, too expensive. Uh, I think it's more, uh, new dormitory construction is more important. And the eighth and the ninth statement, these are similar. This is about separate parts of the community. The eighth statement. So adapting of the environment, academic, physical, social environment for the uh, members of community of Vilnius University with special needs. And I will ensure that the university during my term becomes the most uh, attractive, the best uh, place to study for people with special needs in Lithuania. I have a question. Professor Yuzelunas, uh, can people with uh, disabilities go and uh, to your uh, room to, to visit you at work? Uh, Professor Zhukauskas, well, my office, it depends also on the... This is a question of heritage uh, and protection. Zhukauskas adds special needs. I think it's a bad term. It's individual needs, not special needs. I would like to update the statement. And we're already doing that. And the ninth statement? the adaptation of academic and social environment for the international members of uh, community of Vilnius University. So I will ensure during my term that the Un Vilnius University becomes the most attractive place to study for international community. And the last statement, constant support to scientific activities of students. I will improve the accessibility of the scientific literature in the Vilnius University. I will expand the funds and will include the newest scientific literature in the library. No comments, as I see. A comment by Professor Zhukauskas. We, hard times are ahead because there is a number of programming documents that need to be submitted. It's, it's not a question whether we can increase uh, the accessibility. It's a question of ensuring we have this, uh, we maintain this accessibility. Great. And the end of the commitment text, you should write your name, surname, candidate to the rector, of Vilnius University and as mentioned you can um, react do some additional comments if you wish I've, you know you can make commitments to the commitment uh, this text so just give us your thoughts well I guess we can add more commitments there are many important things that are well obviously important we could add 10 more other issues, but then only in, in the feudal system we, we get uh, where the, the Lord uh, you know, does something for the subjects. So what we actually need is a two-way relationship. So what I hope 
is that also a commitment from the students to help in achieving all these uh, goals. And also I hope that students will be very active in the, during, the, during the lectures. Thank you. Well, I'm very happy about this list. I would like to compliment the student representation because 90% of what's mentioned here is actually uh, the, 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 the topics that Rector is responsible for because Rector is not responsible for everything and sometimes during the discussions people are thinking, speaking about things that Rector is not responsible for but these things are actually what the Rector will do and can do so I'm very happy that student rep students representative included these topics there are comments of the mic which the interprets come here well, I signed only once on the, all the commitments because the lawyers know that one signature is enough. Of course, I understand all of these requirements, all of these wishes and needs, and I know all of them. But well, the, the sad thing is that we need to put all of this on writing, on the paper, which means that maybe there's lack of trust or maybe someone didn't fulfill their uh, promises but I would really also say that as my colleague said that uh, I also expect some uh, commitments from your side that you would commit to see university as your second home that you would commit to be very active in all kinds of cultural and sports activities that you would, you would commit to being here in university all day and you would be happy about that. I would also like to see your commitment to help me achieve these goals because we have to work together to achieve them. We have to row this boat together, we can't do that separately. Professor Arturas? Well, lawyers sign only once, but the leaders and managers should understand that only 70% of what's achievable can be promised and of what was promised, uh, only 70% of what was promised could be actually done. So I've been a leader before, and a manager before, so I know what happens with the promises. That's, that's why I signed for 70% of the wishes. And I do hope that 70% of what I signed to will be achieved. So half of the commitments. But then, given the context, the institutional context, uh, achieving half is already very good. So I hope that after the next five years, all, we all will be able to say that we had uh, these uh, desires, these ideas, we tried to find funding and we achieved a half of it. Thank you, Professor Juras. Well, a rector should be a superman to do everything alone. These issues, these topics are all very important. These tasks are very important. And by assigning them, I do as assume that I will receive support from the Senate, from the Council and from the students, from the whole community. Only together we can achieve these goals. Well, great. Thanks a lot. We're finishing this uh, part of our discussion. We will now collect these important uh, papers. I think we'll have a place for safekeeping. Now we're moving on to the next part of our discussion. The last part of the debate. Questions. That you that you submitted on Slido app, you can still use the Slido app to submit more questions. I've already found a few interesting questions. So, what are the topics? I will give the question, and all candidates will will reply, but they will, they will have only one minute. So there are several. Uh, varieties of the same question in the app. I'll, I'll read one of them. A sad student, uh, a user named sad student raises this question. 
So the question is, how do you see the current financial situation of the students in Lithuania? And what are the three steps that you will undertake to improve the situation of the students? Professor Rimvidas, you'll start. One minute. Well, the financial needs of the students are manifold. First of all, it's expensive to live in a big city. Now, another thing is lack of initiatives. And, uh, of course, another issue is uh, to be able to control his own f finances, to manage them. So, and th these are different things. We already made a commitment to increase scholarships. Of course, we need to go back to the loan issue. We need a state-run uh, loan system for the students. Now, we also need a fund that would uh, fund uh, initiatives by the students. Another issue, financial management. Of course, even limited finances could be managed better or worse. So we could create a program or an app uh, together with the Bank of Lithuania to increase capabilities of the students in financial management. Thank you. Professor Ramunas. Well, one of the bad experiences I've seen is that many students don't want to go to study in foreign countries because they are afraid that they will lose jobs here in Lithuania because they all, uh, often have part-time jobs. And that uh, well, robs them of an opportunity to have uh, unique experiences in other countries and in Lithuania. So as a rector, I will aim to reduce the need for part-time jobs. Now, we talked a lot about finances during the previous two uh, debates. We need different sources for funding. We shouldn't rely too much on the state subsidies. We also try to find other sources, other sources of supporting students. Professor Arturas, well, I can't evaluate the financial situation of students because everyone has a different financial situation. Some have better situations, others in the worse situations. Some students have uh, more finances but don't have talents to study, others have talents but no money. As a rector, my task would be to firstly ensure that the students who are able to study, who have talents, could, could actually do that and have enough finances to do that. Some students might have individual needs or social needs. We cannot just give scholarships to everyone because we have well, very limited resources and then we have to direct those resources where we can achieve our constitutional goals, which are to ensure university studies for everyone according to their abilities. Professor Juras, well, every student is different. There are rich students, less rich students, but then there are students who pay full price for their studies. And then there are studies who have uh, uh, state uh, funding. So university should uh, find uh, ways to support students who can't pay for studies, but have good abilities. Now, we already mentioned the social uh, scholarships and uh, those should be increased in the future. We also see a possibility of free undergraduate level studies. The current uh, parliament is aiming at that. So we'll see what's going to happen. We have to wait and see what the Ministry of Education will do and the Parliament will do in the future. Thank you, Professor Thomas. Thank you. The well, university must ensure accessibility to knowledge. So that's a very important task and we have to find the talents. We have to allow them to grow and develop However, 
what is very important is we have to really see the problems in advance. By that I mean that we have to do more at school. Because quite often students who leave the school make the decisions by taking into account their financial situation. Now we have to help people at this stage. Vilnius University should attract the best pupils, best students, and funding is very important in this, at this point. Now another issue is uh, the possibility for students for part-time job. The director should try to encourage the students to find the part-time jobs that are useful for the students, and not all part-time jobs are like that. Thank you, Professor Amutis. Thank you. I used to teach uh, at master level, and I would ask them how many of you have jobs. Well, almost 100% used to have jobs. But then, what is the quality of your studies? Because if a student has a job, he'll, he will have less time for studies. Now, if we move to PhD level, in our center, we see that our PhD students receive a scholarship and a wage. And after the PhD studies, when they start uh, working as independent researchers, they will end up uh, receiving less because they only get wage without scholarship. But we, we should start very far in advance. S students, when they start uh, studies at bachelor, bachelor level, sometimes run into big problems even though they have support from parents. So we should support students at this level. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. By the way, I would like to remind everyone you that uh, there are water bottles uh, provided for everyone. So you, if, if you feel thirsty, please don't hesitate. Uh, drink the water. One of the l bottles is said to be lucky. So we'll see what you can win. Another question, which was also quite popular, received it received support on Slido. It was asked by Jokubas. He says, good afternoon. Hi, Jokubas. So the question for the candidates. What do you think about the cultural activities in Vilnius University? What importance would you give to cultural activities in Vilnius University in the years to come and probably throughout your term? So, Ramunas, you have the floor. It has been talked much about the community and the quality. One of the ways to create uh, a community and then to strengthen the community is through leisure, not only through work. So sports, music, etc. This is these are the things that connect people from various social groups, various culture cultures, various age groups. So the sports and leisure center we already discussed, I believe could play an important role in this area. Of course it's not an easy project to implement. We need we need a number of things to take into account. I have not committed myself to complete this in five years' time. But this is an area we can work in. Professor Arturas, I would like to remind you that the Vilnius University, amongst the uh, other universities in Lithuania, is different from, from those universities because it's a cultural area, a cultural institution as well. We have important events, concerts in the saints, uh, in our uh, church. Uh, our cultural life is very vibrant and there is a number of opportunities provided by the university. Uh, introduction of the alumni to these activities is also important. So from my point of view, the culture currently is, is very positive. Uh, the artistic culture is very active and this is important for universities in the 21st century. It's an important competence amongst others. Thank you, Professor Juras. Yes, I believe so when I was thinking what to say, well, it was included in my program. The university is the center of culture. 
as we communicate with the students a lot. So the free time of students is also one of the priorities. We're not to mention the orchestra, the theater, and other similar activities which are important. But as I don't have much time sport, I would like to place uh, emphasis on sports after working in classrooms, in libraries, and so on. Exercise is important. So again, uh, I support the construction of the sports and leisure center. Another important aspect is not only scientists uh, make the university famous. The athletes also bring attention to universities. We need to ensure that uh, athletes uh, should be given an uh, opportunity to study in the university to, so that the university's name is more known worldwide. Professor Thomas, when I said that I want you to stay as long as possible in the university, I meant that the students would be able to find the ways to express themselves through culture, through other activities. This is very important for each person. So it's the university's job to ensure that every person finds his or her best uh, sides. I like very much uh, various projects and initiatives uh, prepared by students. For example, recently, my PhD student, she launched a book club. Nobody has thought it's such a simple thing and it's, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost nothing for us, for them, but the benefits this initiative bring, these benefits are extremely important. They're the, are above, of, above our expectations. So I think this is important. Please continue to do this. Thank you, uh, Professor Imutas. Let's not forget what's written in the statute uh, of the university. It says uh, science, studies, and art. Art is mentioned in the statute. I think art is extremely important. And the questions asked were related to what is your relationship with sports? Do you engage in sports? But uh, not many ask about art. I was uh, I formed part of the choir uh, for many years. This is also an important activity. So cultural activities uh, take place in the university in Vilnius University. This is discussed in the media on social media. We see that this happens. I don't think that. Uh, we are. This is our week's part. No, we have choirs. We have uh, a number of activities. We just need to continue doing uh, what we've been doing. Uh, Professor Rimvedas. Two important aspect aspects. Culture is uh, what binds us. What binds the community, different uh, community groups. So common joint events. Uh, for example, the cultural night is important when we see the plays that are prepared by the students, the lecturers, it's an important event. Another aspect that strengthens the community is the identity. So our cultural heritage, the university heritage, which we share, we need to be interested in our cultural historic heritage. And this is what strengthens our community and will continue to strengthen our community. Thank you. Thank you for answering this question and it will be a great ending to our discussion. Everybody has had time to express their opinion, everybody has had an opportunity to start the first one and to finish the round table discussions and the last question is this. I received a question about when will I return the ball? I didn't, I didn't take any. So a question about, uh, there was a question about if any of the candidates doesn't have a wife. So they all do have wives. So, but this is not the question we will be discussing. The last one, the last question, which did not receive as much support, but it, uh, it was raised by a few people and uh, we already heard this question before. I believe this is an important one for the university 
and it's uh, highly symbolic that uh, this will be asked in the, among student students. What do you think about pl plagiarism in the university and in general about the academic ethics? What will be the measures to tackle, to address plagiarism and cheating as well? So let's start with Professor Arturas. We hear about it often, but we don't have much facts. This is an important problem in the universities. I participated in the rector's conference when we in the university conference and we were drafting a new ethics code and we discussed uh, cheating. I think we should not tolerate such practices. But of course quality is important. When I was a professor and I had a number I was an advisor of a number of bachelor, doctoral thesis. I didn't face this problem with my students because I worked individually with each and every one of them. I didn't give them mass uh, jobs to complete. Everybody had the different tasks. Everybody worked with me. They felt that they had a guide. They had a, an advisor. So this is the quality. Uh, a matter of quality. There, there should be no room for cheating and then nobody would be able to do so because there is no point. Thank you. Sir Yuri, Thank you. Professor Yuras. Yes, well, we hear about the problems. We know the problems. What really, what is really good is that I know that students send observers to exams. This is a very good initiative. It's a very good way. Students watch over themselves. This is important because it might be difficult for the lecturer to ensure that there's no cheating because there might be 20 or 30 people in the exam. On the other hand, there's the presumption of innocence. We can't assume that all the students are cheating. Another issue is that uh, during an exam you can see very quickly whether the student knows the topic or not. And if he doesn't know the topic, well, then he may be used some forbidden technology. Now, plagiarism is another thing, it's a problem all over the world, and we have Ethics Codex in Vilnius University, which says very clearly, uh, plagiarism uh, is uh, mentioned there, and it's mentioned very clearly, so I do hope that a healthy community can get rid of this. Thank you. Professor Thomas. Well, I think it's also a reflection of problems in our society. Thus, it's very difficult to say that the university will be able to get rid of it. We just see too many examples of that in our society, maybe some leftovers of the previous times. But I think that with the change of mentality, we can change this. We, can, we have to be intolerant to, to this problem. Another question is, do we need the testing tests that can be cheated in? Of course, it depends on the study cycles, but I do believe that a good lecturer can find ways to check the knowledge of the students in an objective manner and in a such a way that there's just no way to cheat. Thank you. Professor Emutis. Thank you. Well, plagiarism of uh, published articles. The journals have ways to check this and we need to encourage publications in the best journals because they have less plagiarism because they well check uh, carefully more carefully for this now in Lithuania we have a special uh, ethics controller for this issue there were uh, last time I checked there was only one complaint for Vilnius University back in November so that means that the problem is not too big Could be that the students sometimes also feel offended that uh, uh, lecturers are using the students' uh, inf information and students' uh, articles for themselves. Well, that's a different topic. We really need to go deeper and understand what's the problem. But as far as I know, Vilnius University has only one complaint at the ethics controller. Thank you, Professor Invidas. Well. Trust and respect are the keywords here. 
if the student will respect and trust the student, uh, the, the lecturer and the researchers will trust and respect each other, we will have no problems with that in our community. Thank you, Professor Ramunas. While I was studying in Vilnius University, smoking was a big problem in Lithuania. Back then, uh, you could see people smoking in all the cafes and restaurants. Then, a few years later, people started uh, talking about uh, restrictions for smoking. And I thought that this is impossible. Lithuanians will never stop smoking, even if we would have a law, the law would be repelled in a month. Well, that did not happen. And now smoking is almost forgotten in public uh, spaces. That shows that solutions can be found and decisions can be made. And we can fight uh, against bad habits in Lithuania. So a solution could be similar here. We should really be intolerant to this problem and we should speak very publicly when we see examples. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. And just before finishing our broadcast and our debates, would like to thank all the participants, the moderator thanks the interpreters, the interpreters would like to thank the listeners, we also would like to thank the interpreters in to sign language, they also helped our community to participate better in the discussion. And I would like to also thank the students' representation for a very good event. I would like to thank the library for giving us space. And thanks for all the candidates for all your comments and signatures. Of course, the students will come back with the demands to see you later on. And now I would like to wish all of you best of luck in your journey. Of course, uh, you need to be brave for the journey, and it's not an easy journey. So, the next week will be full of challenges for you, so best of luck in that. And uh, applause for the candidates.